in the previous video we talked about how we can uh, make a hello world uh, program using python and flask in rest apis where we just uh, get a hello world uh, json as a response and also a hello world with an argument from this video and the next two videos we'll be developing a to do list api using flask restful and flask this will include uh, setting up the get and post request and also the put and delete request so we'll be uh, creating tasks using the tool using an api which we'll be creating on our own we'll be uh, updating those tasks and also deleting them and you can also have a way to get those tasks back to us using the api so this is what we're going to do in this video and the next upcoming two videos in this video we'll be making our get and post request in our to-do list api and in the next video we'll talk about the put and delete request and in the final video we'll actually integrate our api with a database uh, that can be used which can be again then deployed and be used by everyone around the world so let's get started let's start preparing our to-do list api first let's go into our application where you're making it so it was i think to do api and let's open up our code and here it is so uh, we had made a hello world program before but i've deleted the hello world part from the code and we just have a very simple uh, flask server with uh, an api object instantiated now let's see how we can make our to do list api so first we need uh, the endpoints we need url endpoints for our api right so let's say api dot add resource this is how we add our api and each api is going to be each url endpoint has to be uh, a class in itself so this is going to be slash do slash integer and it's going to be to do id so this is how we are going to access each and every task in our to-do list using a to-do id or a unique id which is associated with each task in our to-do list so now let's go ahead and make our uh, class which is going to be to do and we are going to inherit from resource again now uh, we are going to make a get and post request for this video so uh, the get request to get that particular task using the task to do id and post to actually uh, send our data to back to the server or send our task or save our task in the server uh, in the fifth video we'll be saving it in our database but that is what we're going to do today so let's have a get request which accepts to do id as an argument and now we have to return something right so we have to return something here and that something is going to be the task which we can access using a to do id so let's make our interim database so basically a way where we store all of our to-do lists so it's called to do's and we have to always return something that is serializable uh, basically in json format so uh, a very close mimic of json and python is dictionary so we're going to make a dictionary and then access our task and our data using that dictionary uh, sorry about that and yeah now uh, our to do's uh, database so this is going to be an actual sql database in the final video but now we are going just going to work with uh, a simple python dictionary this is going to be in this format so we'll have the to do id so let's say one and each to do id is going to have the task and the task is going to be uh, of two uh, is going to have two keys so one is going to be task which is let's say going to be write hello world program and it's also going to have another key which is going to be a summary of the task so let's say write the code using python now each of our tasks is going to have a unique task id here and is also going to have uh, the task dictionary which is going to be having two keys the task and the summary now all we have to do here is return the to do's by the to do id and this is how we can actually get our 
task back from the server. Now, if you see here, uh, we are actually returning uh, the dictionary inside or uh, the value in which to do ID is the key. So the value here is this piece, piece of data. And if you see, this is already in a dictionary format. So it can directly be returned using the get request and we don't have to serialize it any further. Now let's see this in action and let's see if our get API actually works. So now again, we need to use Postman to actually see if we are able to uh, get a request successfully or not. It is the easiest way to do it. So let's give it a minute. It should open. So we had talked about Postman in our previous video. Uh, I had gone through very simple basics of Postman. We are not going to be using Postman uh, in a very complicated format today. So yeah, let's wait. It shouldn't take that much time. It usually doesn't. But I don't know why it's taking out of time today. No problem. Should open right now. I really need to change or update my laptop, but yeah, we're here. So awesome. Now let's run our server first. So api.py, let's just save it again. <coughs> Sorry. And yeah, now we can access our task one using this URL endpoint, which is slash to do slash end. So we do slash one and press send. And we get our task, which is B, which is the task uh, write hello world program and the summary being write the code using Python. Now, this is how we can get uh, our task using our task ID. And now let's see how we can get a list of all of our tasks. So now we need to have a URL endpoint where you can get a list of all the tasks. So let's make more than one task here. So let's say two and let me copy this and let's also have three. So now we have three tasks. So this, let's just say this is task two. And this is task three. And the summary, let's say, writing task two. And the summary for this is going to be, this is task three. Now this is how we write our tasks and we need a way to get a list of all of our tasks, right? Because we usually don't just see one single task. We want to see a list of all of our tasks in a to-do list and then we can work with it. So now let's have another URL endpoint for this and let's call it to-do list. So each, each endpoint will have its own class. Let's say slash to-dos, that's it. So slash to-dos will give us a list of all of our uh, to do's uh, tasks and to do slash to do ID is going to give us uh, the particular task. So let's just implement it right now to do list inherit from resource. And all we have to do here is return to do's. So, oh, sorry, my bad. Uh, we need to get and then we return to do's. Now, as you see, we just have to return a list of all of them, right? And they are already in a Python dictionary, which is serializable by the server. So now what we have to do is run our server again and just have slash to do's here, nothing else, press send. And as you can see, we get a list of all of our tasks. And that is how we uh, have a get API for our to-do list API uh, program. Now, next thing which we have to do is uh, uh, have a way to send a task to the server or actually write a task, right? So this is, this is something which we're going to do using a post request. Now, for a post request, you can just click here and go to post and our post request is going to have a body. So basically the body is going to be the task and the summary which we want the server to accept. And we want to make sure that the format is always like this. So it is in JSON format and it is going to have a task and a summary key where the value is going to be string. So we want we want to let Flask know uh, the kind of uh, data we're sending back to the server. So we need to parse that 
data, uh, the parse the body, and then uh, add it or append it to our Python dictionary. So for that, we need to have a request parser uh, called as regparse right here. So using regparse, uh, we can add two arguments, which is our task and summary to the sorry post argument body, and then use that to append to our to-do's dictionary. So let's write our uh, request parser now. So let's say task post args is going to be regparse dot request parser. Now let's add our arguments. So task dot add argument. The first is going to be task, and it's going to accept a type string, uh, and the required is going to be true. So it is uh, compulsory to add a task, and when a user is uh, not able to or has not done that, then we are going to have a help. Here we're going to say task is required so that the user knows what to accept and expect. And the next thing which we need is the summary. So again, a summary argument, type string, and we need a summary of our task. We are not going to make a task blindly. We need to add some context to our task when we have a to-do list. And yeah, so now we have a way to parse this body when we send it to the server we have to now make use of it. So let's have a post request, self to do ID. And now we need to accept our arguments. So args equal to task post args dot parse args. So using this function parse args, we can actually get our JSON data into our server. So now the args variable contains a Python dictionary with task and the summary. And now all we have to do is first check whether our uh, task is already there in our to-do's list or not. If it is there, then we show an error and we abort uh, the process. And if the task is not there, then we append the task to our to-do list. So first check if the task already exists or not. So if to-do id in to -do's. So if the key to do ID is already there, then we abort. So abort is another, again a function by Flask RESTful. So we abort, we send a 409 code and we just say task ID already taken. And if there is no to do ID uh, or no new task of the same ID, then we append it. So we just do to do's to do id is equal to sorry, equal to so we have our task and it's going to be args task and we have the summary it's going to be args summary so this is how we append our tasks to our to do python dictionary now this uh, dictionary is going to be static. Uh, it is not going to change ever or keep adding uh, data to it every time we close the server because it's a Python dictionary. Uh, it's going to get instantiated every single time we run the server. So uh, in the fifth video, in the final video, we're going to actually migrate our dictionary to an actual database, which is then going to store our data in a long-term manner. But for now, let's see how we can add or send data or post to do task. So yeah, our server is still running. So we have everything ready here. And now let's first see how many tasks we have. So we do a get and we press send. And we have three tasks now, one, two, three, as you can see here. And now let's add a fourth task. We have post to slash four. And the task, and we go to raw JSON. And this is the body task and summary. So this is the fourth task and the fourth task summary and we press send. And my bad again, we have to return something, right? So let's return the same thing which we have added. So to do id. Now let's do it again. So I'll be closing the server so that we have only three tasks and then we run the 
server again and now let's add our fourth task again so press send and as you can see we have added our fourth task and just to confirm that we have go back to slash to do's do a get request and you can see four tasks here in the output body so this is how we uh, have a post request or we send data from the user to the server so we have a post request we have a request parser basically which accepts two arguments task and summary then we take those arguments here to the server and then we append it to the append it to our database if it does not exist and if it exists then we see the task id is already taken so this is how we have uh, finished the get and the post request in our to-do list api and in the next video we'll talk about how we can edit our uh, tasks and also delete them so this is all for now uh, thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one